people may ask, why, why do you sit down and do this? He was the love of our lives. If we want people to see how amazing he is and will forever be. We loved our son beyond measures and our hearts are broken. He cared more than anyone I've ever met and that's why I love him so much because he reminds me of my daddy. Elijah DeWitt was loved by almost everyone. He was a star football player, a loving family guy, and a boyfriend much wiser than his age. But there were two people who didn't love him. In October 2022, that ended in the worst way imaginable. How did Elijah lose his life that fateful night? And why? Did his killers face any justice? And what is Elijah's family doing today? This is the full story of Elijah DeWitt. It was a quiet night on October 5th, 2022, in Lawrenceville, 30 miles northeast of Atlanta, Georgia. Elijah DeWitt and his girlfriend, Bailey Redling, were out on a date. Elijah was only 18 and Bailey was 20, but they'd been together for five years. They were certain they had found their other half. The plan that night was to play games and have dinner at the Dave & Buster's Arcade in the Sugarloaf Mills Mall. They had gone on a double date with their friends, Oscar and Angel. Before they could play any games though, Elijah gave Bailey his credit card so she could buy their food from the mall. He gave Bailey a kiss and waited in the parking lot while Bailey went inside with Angel. The four friends had only been at the mall for 15 minutes when Bailey and Angel got worried they couldn't find Elijah and Oscar anymore. They called them multiple times before Oscar finally answered. Oscar was in a panic. He could barely talk. The only thing he told Angel was outside. When Bailey returned to the parking, she saw everything red. The two girls rushed to Oscar, who was on his knees next to his friend. Elijah was on the ground on his back. At first, Bailey didn't even understand what was happening. She'd gone into a state of shock. She remembers the moment she saw Elijah lying on the ground motionless. You're screaming in the moment because you're in shock. So it's like a scream that you don't try to do, it's just coming out. The last word that 18-year-old Elijah whispered was help. I run over to Elijah and he's on the ground and I go right over to him. I checked his pulse and I got freaked out because there was nothing going on there. Some sweet lady came around the corner and said, baby, he just got shot. Calm down, we called 911, they're already on their way. No one should watch their loved one pass away like that. And no one should be brutally unalived at the age of 18. Um. I'm pretty sure they're calling you right now, uh, different people from Sugarloaf. We're in front of Dave & Buster's in Lawrenceville. A uh, gentleman got you. Indeed, Elijah DeWitt was pronounced dead that night. Elijah was only 18, but he was a star receiver from Jefferson High School's football team. He was nicknamed Easy e by NFL star Cam Newton. The night before his death, Elijah was at his girlfriend's apartment. In the morning, Elijah went to practice and Bailey went to work. A few hours later, Elijah texted Bailey to let her know he'd had the best practice yet. Then Elijah went to play golf with his friend. After that was done and Bailey got off work, the two met for their double date. After his death, Bailey wrote on social media, they say you aren't supposed to question God, but damn, I never thought I would be having to write this. Baby, I know you couldn't help what happened, but damn, why'd you leave me? We had so much. Until I get my wings to be with you again, make sure our house in heaven looks exactly how we planned our first house to look when we are multimillionaires. Bailey said no other words could describe Elijah better than gentle giant. Elijah was a light. He wasn't a man of many words, but every room he walked into, he made his presence. He made me a stronger person. He made me. He cared more than anyone I've ever met. And that's why I love him so much because he reminds me of my daddy. Bailey's tribute was truly moving. None of this is real to me yet. So I feel like I'm stuck, Reedling wrote. I don't think any of it because I truly believe in a long ass dream. I'm waiting for you to text me, call me back, or snap me. Elijah, I need you with me. I need you here to tell me if I'm being dramatic. I need you here to give me a hug, even when I don't want a hug. To kiss me, tell me everything is going to be okay. To tell me to come inside and just lay in bed when I mentally or physically don't feel good. I need you here as protection when I'm scared. Elijah's candlelit vigil on October 11th had 100 people gathered. Jefferson High School here is where Elijah DeWitt made his mark and his impact on the entire community is evident by the number of people who showed up for his vigil. Every 
everyone was in tears, shock, or disbelief. We fill a very, very big lonely void. Elijah's mother, Dawn Erwitt, said, definitely the worst day of my life. His life just came completely screeching to a halt in seconds. We loved our son beyond measures and our hearts are broken. Erwitt said that her son's one and only passion was football. He strived to be number one and was working hard to go D1. Now he'd been unalived on his father's birthday. Having this moment of, wait a minute, I need to check on what time he's coming home and realizing I will not make that text again. Initially, the detectives were looking into a robbery gone wrong, but just two days after Elijah's death, the detectives announced they'd arrested two suspects. 18-year-old Kamar Bryan and 19-year-old Chandler Richardson were arrested in South Carolina as they were trying to flee their homes. They were extradited back to Georgia on felony murder charges. The Gwinnett County judge denied bond for both of them and told them, do you know what this means for you? You're going to be here for a while. You have no expectation of privacy in this place, okay? Look, there's not much I can do for you today. All I can do is tell you what is. What is is what's on this paper? I don't know if it's right or wrong. It's on the paper, okay? Yeah. They should at least let that sink in if they didn't seem to show any remorse for what they'd done. Indeed, while Elijah donated his organs and helped to save others' lives, even in death, his two killers showed no tears and no regret apart from getting arrested. They even pled not guilty. Well, one of the two teenagers accused in the shooting death of an 18-year-old Gwinnett County football player will be back before a judge this morning. And now, uh, he was indicted on murder charges, aggravated assault, as well as weapons charges uh, earlier this year, along with 18-year-old Kamari Bryan. Chandler had had three months in jail to think about what he'd done. However, instead of owning up to his crime, he claimed he was innocent and hoped for a deal with a lesser charge. Around the same time, it was revealed that Kamar took the same stance. That noon, a teenager accused of shooting and killing a high school football player, Elijah DeWitt, just pleaded not guilty to murder charges. Kamari Bryan is accused of killing DeWitt while trying to rob him outside of Dave and Buster's. By early 2023, an interesting clue was revealed. Chandler and Kamar knew Elijah. However, they were not friends. The two had met Elijah just a few days before they decided to take his life. According to a detective, they were approached by three individuals who asked the victim if they had any marijuana they could purchase. This happened on October 3rd. On October 5th, Chandler and Kamar were at at the mall looking for people to rob. That's when they noticed Elijah with his friend Oscar waiting for their girlfriends in the parking lot. They noticed the victim standing inside with his friends. They were going back and forth and basically they were looking for people in the mall to rob. Brian removes the handgun from his waistband and begins to raise his right hand, point the gun at the victim's chest, and then the trigger is pulled. Elijah tried to fight them off when he realized what was happening, but of course he was unarmed. Neither he nor Oscar had the necessary speed to disarm arm the other teens. The story is heartbreaking. There was no fight, no drama, nothing that led up to the incident except Chandler and Kamar's disturbed worldview. Whether they genuinely disliked Elijah after the deal two days prior, or he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, that will remain a mystery. Dozens of the victim's friends and family members were in court, including his mother and sister. They listened intently to the proceedings. Kamar and Chandler are facing life in prison for their stupid decision. Hopefully, life imprisonment will give them enough time to find an ounce of remorse for taking an innocent life. But they are not the only people Elijah's family is holding responsible. In March 2023, the DeWitt family made headlines again after they announced that they were suing the mall where Elijah's life was taken. Indeed, aren't shopping malls supposed to have security present at all times? Craig and Dawn's lawsuit states, with full knowledge of the dangerous and hazardous conditions, the mall negligently represented to its invitees that the premises was properly maintained and reasonably safe. The lawsuit names Simon Property Group, Sugarloaf Mills Limited Partnership, Universal Protection Service, the mall security director, Jason Choi and Dave and Busters of Georgia, and five John Doe's as defendants. 
Elijah's parents are seeking compensatory damages on four counts under Georgia law, failure to keep the premises safe, allowing and maintaining a nuisance, voluntary undertaking, and negligent hiring, training, supervision, and retention. Their lawyer said, when businesses know that their property is dangerous, they have two options. One, warn visitors so they know about the danger and can make an educated decision about whether to go to the property, or two, take reasonable safety measures to protect customers who are unaware of the danger. The same month, Don added, this is not the dream we had for our son. Instead, it becomes a daily nightmare that we are unable to wake up from. We are constantly reminded of the opportunities and moments that were taken away from him and sincerely hope that we can use our voices to help bring about some change that will prevent another family from experiencing this in the future. But Don and Craig don't want to hold hatred for Chandler and Kamar, even if Craig won't ever be able to celebrate his birthday again. Forgiveness is for the forgiver. We don't want the hate in this household. You know, we don't know the, the kids. We don't know their backgrounds. We don't know their story. They're forgiven from me. It's touching to see how Elijah's wise parents are after a tragedy. Bailey sees things the same way. Elijah would forgive them, which seems like he wouldn't, you know, if you were those guys' friends or you see him on the field. He's a scary player, but he would have forgave them. I'm going to. There's something in my heart telling me to. I haven't got any hatred towards them. Anger? Yes. Instead, Dawn is focused on remembering and honoring her son and spreading his story in the hope that nothing like this will happen to another person again. I want him to be remembered as a fierce competitor with a very large heart. Kimara and Chandler await their trials. They will be forgiven as they spend most of their life, if not their entire life, in prison. Meanwhile, Elijah is still remembered every day. The love from family, friends, and community is far from over. More than $50,000 was raised for funeral costs on a GoFundMe page. The fundraiser read, We are working toward an idea to honor Elijah and keep his memory alive and acknowledge that there are many needs in the coming months for friends and family of the DeWitts that you could directly impact. Elijah's Aunt Lauren wrote on Facebook, he was our child, but he was also our warrior. He was a protector of his family, his sister, the love of his life, Bailey. And to those of you that shared a field with him, he did not worry about the future. He lived in the moment. He loved big, he was slash is loved by a whole community, and he changed the lives of those he encountered. Elijah was also honored at the first football game after his death. And this marks the first game since the death of Jefferson star receiver Elijah DeWitt. Two players from Jefferson wore the number two on their jerseys. That's the same number DeWitt wore. Before the game, there was a moment of silence and players from both teams and people in the stands held up two fingers to remember DeWitt. Someone who takes a life might feel powerful, if only for a second, but it is the victim, loved by all and protected by justice, who comes out on top every time. People may ask, why, why do you sit down and do this? He was the love of our lives. And we want people to see how amazing he is and will forever be. I have a note that's above his bed that he never took off. And I said, I love what you do, but I love who you are way more. Hey, thanks for watching. What do you think about this case? Do you know of other similar cases? Let me know in a comment. And before you leave, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.